What's going on my fellow game developers? My name is Money Wolf and we are continuing our 2D tower defense tutorial. In this one we are actually going to start building our turrets on top of our plots here or our building area. So to do that we're just going to start by deleting our turret. It's currently a prefab so we can just delete it from here. Now <clears throat> we are going to need some sort of reference to tell us uh, what we're currently wanting selected to build. So we'll have a UI area which will have multiple different buildings obviously right now we only have one tower which is our turret um in the future we may have like a slowing tower that actually slow the enemies down but for this one what we're going to do is we are going to go on our level manager and we are going to add a build manager to our um basically to our level manager here which we will be able to once the script is compiled open this up in official studio code and then actually set it out so inside of our build manager, we want to make this a uh, static reference to this. So we want to say a public static build manager main, which is going to obviously be the main build manager, which there will only ever be one. So to set this as the object, we want to go into an awake method and just say main is equal to this. Now we did this earlier in the series. I just wanted to show you. Um, we're going to be doing it again for the build manager because it'll be something we'll use later. Now, we need enough a header, which is going to be uh, references. Um, and in here, we want a, a serialized header references. That should be right. Yeah. Serialized private float or sorry, private game object, our game objects. Now, we're going to probably make an array of objects to build. And I'm going to call this building prefabs now we could create some sort of class to handle this better with a name and that but we're going to be using the index of the building to actually create it um later on we then want a header which is going to be oh sorry we'll need a, a private um game object called the current or sorry an integer called the current selected game object or so current currently selected tower and i'm going to call this tower prefabs because i want to call these the towers not building so that'll make it simple and we're going to set this to zero by default or i'm just going to say selected tower so it's a bit easier to read we will then create a public uh public uh game object and we're going to call this um get selected tower and in here we are just going to say return and we are going to return our tower prefabs with our selected tower in it this is going to get us the prefab um which we want to spawn um for our game object now this we're setting this up so when we actually click on our tower we can or our build notes our uh, plots that we'll actually be able to get this later on. So later on in this series, we're probably going to add a currency to this and you'll have to destroy um, or get past waves to earn more currency to be able to build towers. But for now, we're just going to leave this simple and keep it like this. So let's go back to our um, Unity here and wait for this to compile the scripts. Now we can actually add in our tower prefabs and tower number one is going to be our turret or tower element zero. Now what we want to do is we want to go to our plot or the singular plot in here and we actually want to create a plot um, script. So we're just going to create a plot script which is going to handle the clicking and placing of the plots or our towers on top of our plots. So we're going to double click this and we want a couple of references here. So we're going to want a private game object called the tower. Now this is going to be null by default because we're not going to have a tower on each plot to start with. We're going to have to build a tower there. Now we also want a reference. So just above this tower, I'm going to put a header called uh, again reference in or reference this in here. And under here we want a serialized field called a private and we're going to get the sprite renderer for the current plot because we're going to want to know when you're hovering over a tower now to know when we're hovering over a, a plot we're going to say on mouse enter so when we enter over a sp a, a plot which has a um a collider on it it will uh, basically call this function here so what we want to do is go sr dot 
color is equal to and we can set a different color now we want to get a private color called start color and then we also want a, another one which is going to be a we're going to set a reference here called a private color which is going to be called the huffer color as well so the start color we're going to get by going to our start method and we're just going to get the start color is equal to our sr.color so whatever this sprite renders current color is is going to be our starting color and then when we enter here we're going to swap this to be our huffer color we then want to say private void on mouse exit so when we leave, we're going to set our color back to our start color. Oh, if I can grab it, our start color here. Then finally, we want a private void called on mouse down, which is going to say basically if we click the button, if we click our mouse on or click the plot, then it will call the this function here. And currently, we'll just go debug.log build tower here and there you go that's just going to call the build tower here and you know what we're going to say by here we're going to pass through a uh name or should we i believe name should work so let's go back to unity and actually set some of these um variables so minimize the uh, box collider we just need to make sure one of these is on it but then in our sr we're going to take the sprite render and drop that in there and then our hover color we're going to have some sort of well, actually, you know, let's go white, but make it a little bit more opaque. So let's just say one, two, eight or something like that. And you know what? Let's actually do the reverse. Let's make this like 64 by default, which will make them a darker gray, which in the game looks pretty good. So you can see it here. Um, and then we will actually up the opacity when we hover over it. So let's let's see what happens let's hit play and let's just see what happens when we hover over an element you can see it now highlights the element and if we click it it will say plot here 61 if we go somewhere central you see we get plot 4 plot 5 plot 3 plot 2 and i believe we deleted plot 1 so we don't actually have a plot 1 anymore but you can see we have a plot 2 so the next thing we want to do is actually build on top of one of these towers so let's go back to our script here and on mouse down, sorry, on mouse down, we want to actually check if we currently have a tower. So we want to say if tower is equal to null. If it's equal to null, then we just want to return out of this function and just do nothing. Because that means it already has a tower and we don't want to do anything yet. We may want to do something in the future where when we click again, if it has a tower on it, we bring up a menu that we can edit, sell or upgrade our tower. But for now, we don't want to actually do anything. If it's already got a tower, then it's already been placed. But if it doesn't have a tower, then what we want to do is instantiate our new game object. So we want to say tower is equal to, and now we want to say build manager.main dot, and we want to say get selected tower, which is going to return us the tower we want to build. We then want to say instantiate our tower at our transform dot position at quaternion dot identity. And that is going to create our actual tower. So we just want to set the tower equal to this object here. We actually want to make this a temp tower. We're or temp or tower. We're going to call this tower to build just to make it easier. That's the tower we want to build. Um, and this will actually have reference to the instantiated tower we're going to build. So now if we go back to Unity and let this actually compile again, we should now be able to click uh, play. Oh play and actually be able to place towers and i think i've actually made a mistake here i say if it's equal to null then return it's actually supposed if it's not equal to null then return because basically i've just i said there if it's empty then don't do anything whereas if it is empty then we do actually want to do something so i needed to reverse this by using the exclamation mark now let's try this again if we hit play we should be able to place towers on the different locations here and then as the enemies spawn in you can see our towers are now firing 
and take it out. Now we can spawn as many as we want currently, but in the next video, we are going to add in a shop and a currency system so we can actually select the um, tower we want to build. Now we don't have multiple towers, so it's just going to be one tower in our menu, but in the future, we're going to have multiple towers we can select before we actually build them in here. Now look, we're going to have an absolute arsenal of towers. And if you see, if I click one tower, which already has a tower, it doesn't actually do anything. Let's actually stop this and just up the uh, starting enemies to something like 10 and the difficulty factor, something like 1.5. And then we'll make the enemies coming in waves of two. And we'll see how, um, how well our turret system can actually handle the different enemies by just spamming a bunch here. Okay, guys, before I finish this video, I have noticed a bug in the game. Now, if two or more turrets are placed in a position where they will fire off at the same time, we will actually see that the enemies alive is getting called loads of times. You can see it's now set to minus one, minus four, which should not be possible in this style of game. Now, the reason this is happening is because each bullet is hitting this before it's fully destroyed and calling the function of destroy enemy so we want to actually set a, a a private boolean called is destroyed or or is destroyed and set this equal to false to start with we then want to say if hit points is equal to zero and and not is destroyed meaning it still is equal to false then we can do this Otherwise, we're going to say is destroyed equal to true. Now, this should stop it from um, running this multiple times and actually causing an issue. So let's see if this now works. I didn't spot this issue in the previous videos because we only had one turret on the field. Now we have two. I've noticed that is actually a bug. So let's actually see. So we should only get. There we go. But that only happened once. And there you go, you can see enemies alive is always only zero and it's not going below. That means it's not running multiple times, which is great news. So that is it for this video. We've built in a building system. In the next one, we are going to add in a um, turret shop and a currency system to our game. And then after that, we will add in a new turret to add to our shop so we can actually apply new turrets to the game. But that's going to be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.